North Korean troops have already been spotted in the Kursk region. This was reported on the air by Ukrainian Defense Forces serviceman Vitaly Ovcharenko on Radio NV. My unit and I have not encountered North Korean troops yet. In fact, they are generally being recorded. But at this moment, I have no specific data on what is what. After all, they can be confused with the Buryats at a certain level. So it is better for official speakers to voice this information, Ovcharenko said. He also told how the local population of the Kursk region reacts to the information about the appearance of North Korean soldiers on their land. According to him, the local population is not happy about this information. We informed the locals that the Russians are bringing in North Korean troops. They, of course, don't like it. They say, oh my God, and these two, who will be next? They are not happy about all this, the serviceman said. Russian President Vladimir Putin hopes to send North Korean troops to help reclaim parts of the country's Kursk region under Ukrainian control, the Financial Times reports. North Korea sent 12,000 soldiers to Russia to assist in reclaiming sections of the Kursk region that Ukrainian forces have controlled since August. However, Ukrainian analysts stated that these forces were too small to dramatically change the course of the war. Jack Watling a senior research fellow for land warfare at the Royal United Services Institute told that North Korean troops could pose certain challenges for Ukraine due to their cohesion and motivation, which surpassed the current dwindling morale of Russian soldiers. While the Kremlin has been trying to recruit people from developing nations like Cuba, Nepal, Yemen, Sri Lanka and India, to join the war, the entry of regular North Korean troops would mark the first official foreign troop deployment fighting alongside Moscow troops in the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Russia has deployed nearly 50,000 troops to Kursk, the southern Russian region where Kyiv launched its surprise counteroffensive in the summer. Ukrainian troops continue to hold back the nearly 50,000 strong enemy group in Kursk, Zelensky said in a post on Telegram after receiving a briefing from General Alexander Syrsky, the commander-in-chief of Ukraine's armed forces. Ukrainian troops advanced quickly deep into Russia's territory and have since maintained control over hundreds of square miles of Russia's territory. And while Russia has reclaimed some settlements, the line of control has barely changed over the past months. A French military task force with a festive name, Champagne, is wrapping up a mission that's no party, training a whole new brigade of several thousand Ukrainian troops who will be joining the fight against Russia's invasion armed with France-supplied tanks, artillery cannons and other heavy weaponry. The approaching return to Ukraine of the and of Kiev Brigade, after more than two months of intense military training in eastern and southern France, comes at another critical juncture in the almost three-year war. Russian forces are driving westward in an effort to capture all of Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. They've been bolstered by up to 12,000 North Korean troops that have been deployed to Russia's Kursk border region to help beat back Ukrainian forces there, according to U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian intelligence assessments. The re-election of Donald Trump is also keeping Ukraine and its allies guessing about the impact he'll have as U.S. president on the war's future trajectory, following his campaign pledges to swiftly end the fighting and suggestions that Kiev should cede territory to Moscow in return for peace. When deployed, the French-trained and equipped brigade named after a Kiev princess who became a Queen of France could prove to be a formidable force on the battlefields. It will eventually be made up of 4,500 troops, formed of infantry battalions, plus engineers, artillery teams and other specialists, French authorities have previously said. The more than 2,000 soldiers who have been training in France are being put through final paces before their return to Ukraine. The majority of them were recently mobilized and previously had just a few weeks of basic training before their arrival in France in September, the French military says. The Ukrainian military is also training other troops for the brigade back in Ukraine, according to French authorities. The French military dedicated around 1,500 of its own soldiers to the Champagne task force that has been teaching the Ukrainians how to fight effectively together and how to use and maintain their France-supplied weaponry. The French military says the brigade's arsenal will include 18 AMX-10 light tanks, 18 truck-mounted Caesar artillery pieces, 
128 armored troop carriers, anti-tank and anti-aircraft missile systems, plus other weaponry and equipment. With observation drones buzzing overhead and amid clouds of smoke and bursts of gunfire and explosions, the Ukrainian soldiers conducted exercises this week at a French military training camp, showing how they have learned to defend and storm a complex of trenches like those on the battlefronts in Ukraine. The French military wouldn't allow visiting journalists to interview the Ukrainians. French officers involved in the training said the troops are now better prepared for combat that they'll likely experience in months ahead. They have improved a lot, said Colonel Paul. The French military withheld his last name, citing security reasons. Now they are able to fight, they are able to maneuver, he said. They are able to use the different specialists and to use the different equipment they will have on the battlefield. Uh en Afghanistan, on a cette expérience on a expérience du combat, euh, mais sur quelque chose un peu corps expéditionnaire, ce qu'on appelle dans notre jargon les opérations extérieures. Donc on a cette expérience-là, on n'a pas l'expérience euh, d'un combat euh, à parité. Donc de, deux, euh, de, de, de la guerre, euh, de la guerre de deux, deux armées constituées, euh, équipées avec du matériel moderne, euh, ça nous on le redécouvre avec eux. Since Ukraine began using American-made M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles on the front lines, the Russians have captured at least five of them. And now, Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the Russians are using at least one of those captured Bradleys on the Eastern Front. One video circulating on social media shows a modified M2 Bradley with an anti-drone net on top. It is in service with the Russian Army's 30th Motorized Rifle Brigade, which is currently advancing through Selidovo on Pokrovsk. The Russians captured relatively intact Bradleys as well as wrecked Bradleys that could serve as a source of spare parts. Given the broad incompatibility of BAE systems, M2s, with Russian-built vehicles cannibalizing parts is the only way the Russians can salvage their captured Bradleys. Axe writes, how the Russians plan to arm their captured Bradley is unclear. The M2 is equipped with a 25mm auto cannon and a launcher for TOW anti-tank missiles, but whether the invaders have enough 25mm rounds and tow missiles is unknown. At the same time, the Bradley, even without weapons, is a very valuable acquisition for the Russian army, the analyst notes. Unlike Russian infantry fighting vehicles, with their thin armor, the M2 is highly durable. A Bradley can be hit, but the crew will survive, said Ukrainian army lieutenant Nikolai Melnik. At the same time, if a Russian BMP2 is hit, Melnik says, the entire crew will die. The Ukrainian Army's 47th Mechanized Brigade, one of two units riding in the hundreds of surplus M2s the administration of US President Joe Biden has donated to Ukraine, fought in Selidov before taking a short break from the front line ahead of its redeployment to Kursk Oblast in western Russia last month. While in Selidov, the 47th Mechanized Brigade, which also operates all of Ukraine's American-made M1 Abrams tanks, lost several M2s. The advancing Russians captured relatively intact Bradleys as well as wrecked Bradleys that could function as sources of spare parts. Given the broad incompatibility of the BAE systems built M2 with Russian-made vehicles, cannibalization of parts is the only way the Russians will be able to maintain their captured Bradleys.